As the political fallout from Saturday's general election continues, the Labour Party leadership remains in doubt. Professor Robert Patman of the University of Otago's Politics Department joins us to discuss the issues. Good evening. Good evening, Rebecca. What do you think David Cunliffe will do? Well, he's, he's taking soundings at the moment. Apparently he's taking a few days' break. But I think that it, he's facing some very tough choices. And uh, what I've heard recently today was that he's being urged to resign now because mm -hmm. it's, the party appears to be in disarray. And um, that doesn't rule out, of course, him throwing his hat into the ring for any leadership contest. But uh, perhaps given the fact that the Labour Party seems to be so divided at the moment and they are speaking to the media, um, I think it may be sensible to resign rather than stay in position with the party clearly divided because they are an opposition group and they've got to get their act together quickly. They're professional politicians and they're paid by the taxpayer, so they've got to get on with it. How damaged is his reputation as Labour leader? I, I think the Labour Party damaged itself immediately after the last election, uh, when, after Phil Goff resigned, when it went for a very able person who only had two years' experience as an MP, David Shearer. Uh, that, didn't com that didn't communicate seriousness of intent as an opposition party. It was an ABC a policy, anything but Cunliffe approach. Mm -hmm. They were desperate to keep him out. And after two years, their worst nightmare came true. They had to turn to Cunliffe when that didn't work out. So I think the seeds of new, uh, Labour Party's defeat actually began in 2011. And John Key did well despite the surveillance scandal. Do you think that that will have a lasting impact? I, I think uh, it could do. Uh, there was two issues that surfaced and may well continue to surface uh, in, in the near future. One concerns the way the, 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 the how I put it, the accountability. At the moment, uh, Mr. Key appoints both the, uh, the director of the watchdog uh, body, the inspector general, and he also uh, 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 appoints the director of the GCSB. And many people see that as a conflict of interest. Mm. The second thing is, of course, he casually said when he was coming under allegations from people like Snowden and uh, an, uh, an American journalist, Greenwald, that uh, he said he would declassify the relevant documents to rebut their allegations. That was, that was a breathtaking thing to say in the heat of an election that he would go and classify a few documents to show he was right. I mean, that just threw a hot, you know, that raised a big question mark about the integrity of the whole process of classification in this country of uh, confidential documents. Mm. I think those issues will continue to reverberate. But the, you know, for most people, I think, they were conf f fixated on the major things, and quite rightly so, which is the economy. The economy is going well. And it's always difficult when you're in opposition, Rebecca, to make the case that you'll do better over someone who's actually presiding over a strong economy. So I, I think whoever had been in opposition would have struggled. Are we likely to see more of Kim.com? Well, that's a very difficult question. He's a larger-than-life character. He's got considerable financial resources, and he's a determined character. Uh, the question is, can he, will, will he be extradited to the United States? Uh, that is a real possibility. Uh, but he's got, as I say, he's got a very able team of lawyers to try to look after his interests. So we don't know, really. Professor Robert Patman from the University of Otago's Politics Department, thanks very much Thank for you. your time. Thanks, Rebecca. <laughs>